Hello there, Shortcuts. Stephen here, a little bit late pulling videos together because I've been a little bit unwell. <laughs> so I was in bed most of Sunday and uh, not really feeling like talking into the camera. But here I am, and this is list one. For the last list in May, which will be uh, sent out at 9 p.m. on Wednesday, the 29th of May, at 9 p.m. Sydney time. If any of this list um, intrigues you and you'd like to get it on your shelves, then send me an uh, email at shortcutsrecordsaus at gmail.com and I'll add you to the list. This is the soul funk blues and jazz list. And I'm really quite proud of this list. I think this list is awesome. So I'll be very curious to see what you all think. I'm going to start with this, which is a Japan-only release on vinyl. I think it was released in other parts of the world on CD. It also has one of the most incredible sleeves I've ever seen. Now, the record is called A Fifth of Funk, F-I-F-T-H, A Fifth of Funk by George Clinton and the P-Funk All-Stars. And this is the sleeve. Feast your eyes on that. I know it's the not, not the most PC sleeve. There's the back sleeve. It's in remarkable condition. And you've got a truly psychedelic inner. What this is, is um, George Clinton P-Funk is just a, a deity, a god in Japan. Incredible. Everywhere you go, George Clinton stuff. And um, this was a compilation of studio and um, other cool tracks by what was called the, the George Clinton family. So I'll give you an idea. So that's Parliament, Funkadelic, Laurie Green, The Brides of Funkenstein. Um, there is Philippe Wynne, which is an unbelievable tune. Jessica Cleaves, a, a song is called Eyes of a Dreamer. Um, Who Do You Love by Bernie Worrell. So members of the expanded P-Funk family who made solo records or side projects sponsored, often sponsored by Clinton because he was quite a, quite a guy, um, pulled together onto this compilation. Sound quality, ridiculous. And that's partly because of the fact that it is on quite a famous label really in Japan, P-Vine. Um, it looks unplayed to me. I don't think this has ever touched a needle. Green and purple labels. Wow, what a record. Um, I managed to find two, and hence why one is on the list. Now, as is the way with shortcuts, we like to change things up. So let's go in a completely different direction. Now, Shortcuts is often predominantly about Japanese records, but it can be and is about high quality audiophile records, sometimes from this company, Mobile Fidelity. Now this is a Mobile Fidelity record from, I think it's 1985, I have to double check, but it is Diamonds and Rust by Joan Baez. The first Joan Baez record we have ever had on Shortcuts. And it is there, number 3065. Beautiful condition. Now, why would I pull this record so far up? In the list. This thing weighs a ton. What a slab of vinyl this is. The famous Mofi white label. Really nice condition. Not quite near mint, but pretty damn close. Well, this is the one Joan Baez record that I like. <laughs> so I'm not a fan. And I know there are some of you out there, like Cito and others in the group who love Joan Baez. Um, but this record 
is a little bit different. This was by far and away her biggest hit, by the way. Um, and a lot of people call this record out as one of their favorites of the 70s. And so, you know, you think to yourself, why would, why would that be? Half speed production mastered by original masterwork, specifically plated and pressed in 200 grams of high definition vinyl. The original record being released in 1975. Part of the reason this record is so revered is because of this title track, Diamonds and Rust. Um, on this album, there are some songs that she wrote herself. She's not the most prolific songwriter, but that song is utterly divine. And it, of course, is, like many of her early 70s songs about Bob Dylan. And by the way, he, he features on a couple of tracks. There's another later track, um, Winds of the old days that she wrote as well, which is the second or third last track on side two, which was clearly to my ears, uh, almost a forgiveness of Dylan and certainly a recognition that she'd moved on and maybe the end of whatever bitterness there was between them that was certainly captured in that amazing Don't Look Now documentary from 1966. Um, even to the extent on this record that she covers a Dylan song, she covers a simple twist of fate. Um, it's a really cool record and um, as a really weird, in some ways, <laughs> duet with Joni Mitchell. Um, and the second track, Fountain of Sorrow, has this beautiful lilting piano honestly i'm yeah i almost thought about keeping that one but i think there's probably someone out there who love it more than me um and it's a it's a unbelievably good sounding record oh my gosh the bass and the the picked acoustic guitar all right what do we have next what about this this is an early U.S. press of The Unk and Funk by Mr. Muddy Waters on the chess label. Is that upside down? That's probably more like it. Um, one of the last recordings that he did for chess, um, crack band. His It was his live touring band. And they took some of his... I guess, you know, kind of his standard stage classics and they updated them with kind of rolling, kind of rumbling bass and um, far more horns and percussion than we would ever have heard from a Muddy Waters record up until that point. So you've got the likes of Pine Top Perkins on piano and um, Luther Johnson who's an amazing guitarist, um, providing the backing. The one thing that, that you do miss a little bit is more of Muddy Waters playing guitar, but his guitar style doesn't really suit this style of record. And so um, it, it's therefore quite a, quite a, quite a singular record in his, in his uh, discography, but very, very, very good. Very good, very, very good. If you like Muddy Waters, you'll love Unk and Funk. I know some people who think that's his best record. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Next, I have something that I cannot find on Discogs. And it is this. I love Southern Soul. That sweaty sound from New Orleans and, and even further south than that. This is from 1967. It's a mono pressing of Jimmy Hughes, Why Not Tonight? Now, Jimmy Hughes recorded and sang, I think only two albums. Um, and this is a compilation of kind of his later, later stuff with Why Not Tonight, the title track and first song as kind of a touchstone. Listen to that on 
um, on Spotify. And if you like that, you're going to love the rest of this. Um, the, the next two tracks, I'm a man of action and I worship the ground you work on. And in fact, Neighbor Neighbor are as good examples of that amazing Southern soul sound as you're ever going to hear. And these, um, this mono pressing on the Atco label is punchy as, man, it delivers. It's really cool. Now, I'd never heard of, uh, of Jimmy Hughes until this record arrived. There's the, there's the inner and there's the man himself. He is well worth digging into if you love that soul sound, which I do. I think there's one more soul record to come. You know what? I'm going to bring it forward. Because similarly cut from the same cloth, and again, on this wonderful P-Vine label, and only ever released in Japan, is McKinley Soul Mitchell. Now, McKinley Soul Mitchell is much more throaty, um, kind of gruff, more Wilson Pickett than, you know, Jimmy Hughes, who's more Otis Redding. Um, but they're both wonderful. And if you love that kind of sweaty, you know, horn soaked with guitar breaks, though. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy Hughes in particular has sweet as guitar breaks uh, through those songs. And so, yeah, very, very pleasantly surprised by by both of those. All right, I have. I just have a, a shortcuts royalty now. Um, it's this: John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman. Thirty minutes long, or just over, of the smoothest, most beautiful, laid-back vocal jazz that has probably ever been recorded. It is that good. If you haven't heard it, give it a go. It is six ballads. All but the le all but the last, I think, are unbelievable. The last is a little bit, I don't know. It doesn't quite hit me the way that the first five tracks do. Even my wife loves this, and she is not a jazz fan. <laughs> but it's just really cool. And John Coltrane's playing. Well, the whole band, Elvin Jones and those, the band just sounds just. It's a beautiful thing. Shortcuts Royalty for a reason. I know a bunch of you have this record. If it's not in your collection, give it a listen. Um, now, this one came up about two months ago. And the person who got it sent me a note saying how much they loved it. And so when I saw it again, I thought, oh, well. So this is the Japanese first press. Often you can tell because the early presses didn't have the insert. The Japanese... Um, kind of uh, information would be printed on the back, which you, know, you can kind of see. you still got the English lyrics, but anyways, absolutely beautiful condition. This is Ella Fitzgerald with Ellis Larkin at the piano. This is pure naked Ella. You can hear every breath. The piano playing is beautiful. It's just a really, yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful record. Okay, so... I've got a couple of uh, Vinyl Me Please records to come. I'm going to put this one on first. Um, this was my personal favorite Vinyl Me Please record from last year. So just as a reminder, Vinyl Me Please, audiophile record label based out of Denver, Colorado. They have five streams and they pick a record in each stream. So you five per month. And if you're a member, you can kind of pick and choose and add different things. Um, the the two, I guess, most popular, I think, but the two most popular streams are the Essential stream, which is designed to reflect broader tastes and to have wider appeal, although it can still be uh, a, a singular experience like Herbie Hancock's Sextant from last year. But the Classics stream is is probably my favorite. And it tends to be soul, funk, blues, jazz, typically 1970s and earlier. Although there was a Don Blackman record this year that was early 80s. Now, last year, they did this. <clears throat> Sly and the Family Stone. There's a riot going on. 
with the poster. Uh, I'm just going to read Sly's ominously funky masterpiece featuring Family Affair and Just Like a Baby, AAA Lacquers Cut from Tapes by Ryan Smith at Sterling Sound. Pressed on exclusive 180 gram vinyl, Love and Hate. And what that means, the Love and Hate vinyl is that it's kind of like the vinyl is like the white from this sleeve and the red of the flag, and so it's kind of like that. <clears throat> it's really striking on the uh, on the player. Such an ominous and rumbling and murky record. It's it is not what I was expecting. I was kind of familiar with it, but it 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 was not what I thought. If you think of Sly and Family Stone, you often think of the greatest hits. So you often think of, you know, every every uh, every body and all those kind of really upbeat songs. But on this record, there is kind of like this end of the 60s, end of kind of, you know, coming out of a drug haze, revolutionary feel to it. It's a challenging listen. It is not, you know, a poppy record by any means. Um, I think of it as it isn't a million miles away in some respects to Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. It has similar themes, albeit more violent. Think like that if you think about how Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones makes you feel, it's similar to that. And so I loved it. Man, it's, yeah, I love this record. And the pressing is special. All right, just two to go. This is another Vinyl Me Please. Now, this is one of their exclusives. I, oh, no, no, my apologies. This was also a classic. But from way back in the day, I think this is maybe one of their classics from maybe four or five years ago, went back when they were kind of just getting up and running. And it's this, Juju's The Alchemy of the Blues. Um, what you've got here is, I'm just going to read a little bit, Sarah Webster Fabio, an eccentric poet and scholar, backed by Don't Fight the Feeling, a funky blues band starring some of her children <laughs> that was created to give her poems musical verve. Um, this record is pretty much dedicated to Ray Charles, who's her, her hero. And it is seriously funky blues with this chanted kind of a beat poetry over the top which makes it sound like it's probably quite inaccessible and a bit weird, but it's not. It's actually a lot of fun. I really like it. Um, now, one final record here. I just think this is just a sweet record, and so therefore I thought I'd just stick it on. This is Very Cool by Lee Connitz, 1957. Sunflower, Stairway to the Stars, moving around. Billy's bounce being being cut, cut the last tune and probably being uh the most I guess uh accessible. But this isn't this is this is fun jazz. This is uh and it clues in the title. Very cool. And it's exactly what it is. It's not an expensive record. I think it's only gonna be like thirty dollars or something. Um but it's it's just it's a vibe. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was a nice little finisher. So there you have it. Um, George Clinton, Joan Baez, Lee Connitz, <laughs> Sly and the Family Stone, typically eclectic, shortcuts, price list. If any of those tickle your fancy and you'd like to be on the price list that goes out 9 p.m. Wednesday sharp, drop me an email, uh, shortcutsrecordsaus at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.